Imagine this scenario, you have a full class of children learning in rows. Not everyone can see the board effectively. At the same time, you also have children learning from abroad due to being situated there and they're learning from a distance. In addition, you also have certain children who are isolated. How do you provide an effective lesson where children can still contribute regardless of their location? The software I'm going to show you in this video answers that question and it's something that I truly believe in and use every single day. To start off with, let me show you this. And also, let me show you this. If you haven't already said hello and subscribe, please feel free to do that. I want to show you exactly what is going on with this software that I've just shown you. Let's jump into a bit of a tutorial at home. Hi guys, I hope you're well. If you don't know who I am, my name is Thomas Blakemore and I'm a teacher here in Dubai. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the My Classroom element of the My Viewboard. In a previous video, I showed you the My Whiteboard element of My Viewboard and you can check that out in the link provided above. So, what I wanted to show you is some of the features available on My Classroom along with one of my favourites which is the collaborative element and show you how to access and use that with your class just in case you have children doing distance learning, whether you're doing blended learning, a range of different scenarios and yeah this is a growing software meaning there's a range of different updates regularly. Now one of the recent updates is that this is actually available in Arabic and I'll hopefully be able to update the comments as and when different features are added so feel free to check that one out. If you do have any questions as you're going along add them down into the comments and I can get back to those too. Before we start with the video, feel free to like it. That really helps the algorithm out and supports the channel too. So let's jump into the video. So similar to the last video, the first thing you're going to want to do is make an account and that's free to do. You'll just need to sign up. For the purpose of this video, I've already created an account and then you go and sign in. Once you've done that, you'll be taken to this main page. In a previous video, I've shown you this, the My Whiteboard system, and today we're going to be looking at the My Classroom that gives you lots of different abilities for collaboration. So it does say early access, however, it still functions perfectly and it's what I've been using. So we click onto that and it takes us through to this. So this is the main page that you will be very familiar with if you've already watched the Whiteboard episode from before. That would be really beneficial to watch. I'm not going to show all of the different features within this video, so that would help you in understanding how to use this even further. So to start off with, we've got the classroom file management. We've got a new file, it's like a new uh, page system. We've got open, so you can open a QB, which is what this saves to, or a PDF, and you know that you can download Google Slides into a PDF, which makes it easy to share. And then this gives the ability to share what you've got on your screen as a QR code, like that. So that one's really simple to set up too. You've also got a copy link there that allows children to access that one too. This is all of our different media that's available. You'll see we've got pictures and I've shown you this before. So if you type a picture, you'll then be able to input that one. So similar to the last one, we're going to go for a basketball theme this time. I'm going to keep it all themed to basketball today and I'm going to insert a picture of a basketball. From there, I can also import things from my computer. It does link up to your Google, Google Drive and your Google Classroom, which makes it much more efficient. In addition, what I really like about this one that's a little bit different is that you can add in videos. So if I want to, to insert a basketball introduction, I can search that and then find a video that would be suitable for the class. And then I can just simply drag and drop that video in. And that is very different. Now I can move that around to wherever's suitable, make it bigger. And then when I click this play button, then I will be able to. Uh, so from there, we're gonna click off that and I'll show you more functionality. And we've got import web pages so that you can import a range of net web pages and children are able to access that through the main screen. And in addition, there's animated widgets that I previously showed you a little bit. And then you can import them. And then when you tap that, you've even got sound effects coming in too. So there's the media section. We've got the ability to move things. 
Our pen I've shown you previously, the AI pen is a little bit different. Um, if I just show you that one, if I show you we want to draw a basketball, it's already picked it up. And there we go, we can start to insert those pictures easily into there. We've got all our different pens, rubber, our different shapes, our text function, our forward and back, which is important. So if I press back and I didn't want that, then I can input those in very easily. The backgrounds page is a little bit different. To input backgrounds, it's quite straightforward. And in my opinion, a little bit easier. You've got this little system down here. You're going to press onto that. And then if we're doing a lesson, for example, English, then you can apply that to the page and the children will be able to access that very easily. You can also image search straight from the internet and that's very beneficial to insert a range of different backgrounds or if you have something from Google Drive, you can add that one in too. For the purpose of this video, we're going to keep it nice and wide just to keep it easier for you guys to follow. Another powerful feature is the record your screen function. Now that's extremely powerful because by clicking that, then you're able to record your screen similar to what I'm doing with Screencastify, but it's free because it's through the system. In addition, you can take a snapshot and screenshot whatever you're doing. That would be really beneficial if you wanted to then print it off and give it to children as they're doing work in books or anything along those lines and be able to share with the children at a later date. So this on the side is what's called the attendee management menu, and this arranges a range of different huddles. Now you're probably wondering how children are able to access the huddle. Now as a teacher, you need to actively let the participants join. To do that, you're going to click the ID, and that will show this pop-up, which is the join my viewboard QR code. From there, you can ask the children to scan the QR code if they have a digital tool to be able to do that, such as an iPad, or in addition, you have a link down here. What I do with this link is I copy this one and just paste it straight into Google Classroom and that way the children access this first thing in the morning. So from there, what we're going to do is we're going to scan the code so that we have the My View Board pop up. And then we're going to open that up on my iPad and then hopefully you will be able to see exactly what the children would see on both screens. So then here, you can see I popped up in the corner on my screen, and then on the children's screen, you can then also see what the children are able to see too. Now that's really important because at the moment, the children aren't able to see anything. However, if I change my lines, apply to this page, And you can see that on the iPad, it has changed too. Now, through the huddle, you can select different groupings. Now, you can see at the moment, there's just one person in group one. This can go up to a huge amount of people. Now, if I split up into groups, you can see now on my iPad, I have my own individual whiteboard. Teacher's whiteboard, individual whiteboard. Okay, so if I wanted to separate them into individual huddle groups, I can choose to give them their own huddle groups and then separate them into groups. Or if I wanted to, depending on the size of your class, it goes up to 49, you can separate them up so that you're able to have one whiteboard each. Uh, for now, I want them to have their own and just show those individual attendees and then go from there. So now, if I wanted to, and I wanted to show different children, different groupings show up there. So then if I gave Thomas the ability to write on his whiteboard, Thomas would be able to go onto the whiteboard and write whatever he wanted to. And remember that AI pen is available on this whiteboard. So if the children wanted to write a face, they could do that and add that one in. bigger. Now you're probably wondering, yeah, this is great and everything, Thomas. However, how do I see what the children are able to see? Now this window here pops up what the children have. So you're immediately able to click on their page and see exactly what the children have been up to, which is really effective when the children are writing. So again, you've got the children doing something and you're able to see what the children are doing. It might be you're asking a question such as, well, what's two times two? And you want the children just to write on a whiteboard. You can imagine you've got some children in the class who can do that. 
But at the same time, you've also got those distant learners who can then contribute to that by sharing their answer from abroad, wherever they are in the world. In addition, if you have more than one user, you can add them into individual groups by just simply dragging and dropping individual users into different groupings there. So I want this one in group two now, and then I would have a slightly different whiteboard because I'm in group two's whiteboard now. So if we go back to individual attendees, now, one of the features that I really do like is if a child, this works better on a computer, if a child decides to be a bit distracted and mess around with different tabs and isn't on the lesson that they're on at the moment, then what you can do as a teacher is click this icon and every attendee gets something that says that they need to listen. So that's really good for when you've got those distant learners. If I click that off, then everyone can get back involved with the lesson. So let's go back to the teacher's page, which is this one here so that the children are able to see what's on my page. Now, at the moment, I'm on group one's page, but I want to go back. So it's really important to be able to use these windows to navigate through different groups. And this is really effective for showing children different bits of learning. Now, one of the things that I've not shown you, and I'm hoping it will show uh, here, is that there is actually a video section just in the corner. So now I have my camera enabled, the children will be able to see me as I'm teaching things, which again is really powerful, especially if you've got children who are abroad or isolating and unable to see their teacher. So then from there, it's really effective because you can have children writing lots of different things. You can have children writing on their own individual whiteboards. You can have children writing in groups and you can also apply backgrounds to a range of different huddles too. So if I wanted children to have a bit of a Venn diagram and I wanted to apply it to a huddle group, I'd go onto a page and then click this one, apply to huddle group, and then depending on where the child is, they would also have that that shows up too and then the children can do work from that as well. So you're able to give children a range of different backgrounds, which would also be really good for that differentiation element too. Now I've shown you an absolute range of different features here. If you do have questions, please feel free to ask. I'm always available to answer those different questions. There are also different ways of using this and hopefully I can share that with you in a future video. And so that marks the end of the video. Hopefully you find this video informative. If you did, feel free to like the video. That always supports the channel. If you have any questions about how to use the My Classroom element of My Viewboard, feel free to drop a comment below. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe. I make a range of teaching, traveling, and ed tech content for you to check out, and you can see that within my channel. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Until then, I'm out.